This is episode 69 of the Life in Norway show, and today I have something a little different for you. I'm just back from a two-week Northern Lights cruise to the north of Norway on the Fred Olsen ship Borealis. On the journey, I met Captain Victor Stoika, and he was kind enough to sit down with me for a few minutes. Whether you love them or hate them, cruise ships are a common sight along the Norwegian coastline these days, so I thought hearing from a seasoned captain would be a curious diversion from our usual interviews. Captain Stoika is from Romania and has worked for Fred Olsen since 2001, with almost 12 years' experience as a cruise ship captain. We talk about his life at sea, the challenges of sailing in and around Norway, and what the future of cruising may look like. You can find out more information about today's show on the show notes page. Just head on over to lifeinnorway.net slash podcast and look for episode 69. Happy listening. I am joined today by Captain Victor Stoika. We're on the Fred Olsen Borealis, and I'm lucky enough to be speaking to the captain on the bridge. Captain, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Nice to have you here on the bridge. Now, I've long been fascinated by ships, and I think a lot of people in Norway are the same. We see them day in, day out, but very few of us know what it's like to to work on a ship, and in particular to captain uh, a cruise line. It's uh, a very unique position, one with a lot of responsibility. So why don't you start by talking us through your career and how you got to become captain of this Fred Olsen ship we're on right now? First of all, I like what that you mentioned that it comes with a lot of responsibilities. <laughs> That's the main thing. But it's, it's, it's a wonderful job and um, I really like it. Uh, just briefly, I, um, I finished, I graduated the Marine Academy in uh, 1987. And then since then, I started on the uh, cargo ships as a third officer. And then uh, I've been fascinated by the cruise ships, seeing the big cruise ships going in and out. Uh, I remember one time I was going with a cargo ship in Port Everglades in the US, and I was fascinated by all these big cruise ships coming. And I said, I will try that. So I, I started in 1997 on the cruise ships. And uh, then in 2001, I uh, started with the Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. And since then, I'm, I'm here, so 22 years in, um, in Fred Olsen. And uh, I have now this year 11 years, 12 years nearly as a captain mm-hmm. in Fred Olsen. So basically, this is uh, my, um, my career through the a short version. <laughs> What's it like being away from home for so long at a time? We are lucky, of course, it's not, especially when you have small kids and families, not, not a good, um, not, uh, not a good time when you live home. But we are lucky enough here to have a good, very good contracts. We are two months on board and two months home, which is not, uh, not bad at all. So, uh, yeah, it's manageable. And, uh, of course, this is the job we choose. So, yeah, we have to do it. Absolutely. So we're sitting now in essentially your office. This is the bridge of the Borealis. Um, Talk us through what goes on. What, what's it like working on the bridge? The, our main concern uh, on, on, on a cruise ship is safety, I would say. So everything it's, comes around safety. And of course, it's the passenger satisfaction, but also safety is part of the passenger satisfaction, of course. So uh, basically, all what we do is to ensure that we keep all the operations smooth, safe. And uh, of course, everything depends on the weather as well. The better weather we have, it's uh, nicer and easier. But when we have uh, uh, bad weather, the things are getting a bit more complicated. So our main focus is to keep everything uh, in good order, safe, and in the same time to offer uh, our guests and an, uh, satisfaction and uh, good value for for the money, so to speak. So basically, this is uh, what it is. My particularly for me, uh, I'm uh, is between going. My job is between being on the bridge, of course, and and uh, watching over over um, overseeing the whole operation, socializing with uh, with passengers as well. I'm involved in itineraries and, and fuel, and it, it's a lot of. Uh, but as I said, our main concern is the safety of our guests, the crew, and the ship. That's so everything is uh, focused around this. This morning we had some maybe f- three, four meter high waves. Uh, there was a little bit of rocking on, on the first full day at sea. Um, what happens on the bridge when the sea is rough? I mean, that's that's probably not the roughest weather where you encounter at sea. But do, do things change when you have some rough weather? Yes, that's correct. It was not the roughest. Uh, we can go m- much more than that, safe without any any problems. 
Of course, we have to evaluate and uh, sometimes we have to divert or cancel a port when it's very rough. As I said, safety is our priority and come first. And of course, we have different levels of uh, le level of manning the bridge and preparations and checklists, securing, informing our guests and all these things. So it is on different levels according to the weather forecast. This is a very international environment to work in. I think most people understand that about cruise ships. Um, uh, the Philippines and Indonesia and countries like that supply a lot of the world's uh, staff in, in, in the maritime industry. Uh, but here on the bridge, I've noticed many different nationalities. Um, can you talk us through where people come from in the world that are working on the Borealis? It is very international. If I'm not wrong now, by, by uh, um, on top of my head, I think we are about 20 or 24 nationalities uh, on, on board. So it's very international. And uh, that's really, really a, a, a beautiful thing. I really like it to work with uh, with a lot of nationalities. You get to know different cultures, different people. Really, really interesting. And uh, for example, like here on the bridge, we have from I'm from Romania. We have from Philippines. We have from UK. Um, where else? We have from from Bulgaria, from uh, um, Germany. Different, totally different. Uh, so it works very, very good. And uh, English, of course, is our uh, language here, working language. And uh, yeah, it works very good. Yeah. So uh, when people think about captaining a ship, I think a lot of people might have this uh, impression of someone uh, in, a, in a posh uniform standing at a wheel and steering, right? That's not the case on a ship like this. So could you talk us through a typical day for you? Like how, how involved are you in the in the operations? Is it a case of overseeing other people? Are you more actively involved? How does it work from, from when you wake up to when you go to bed? You're, you're right. A lot of people, they believe that being a captain of the cruise ship, you just uh, enjoy and socialize with guests. And, but it's not, not like that at all. And I, I'm glad it's not like that because these days there are a lot of um, requirements which um, makes um, all the operations safer. So you really have to keep uh, all the time updated. And uh, you have to get involved in, in um, most of the aspects of, the, of our operation. And uh, of course, beside that, uh, socializing with passengers, which I like it very much, is a very it's a highlight of, uh, of, our, of our job. And uh, definitely you have to, to oversee and to, to get involved in as much as you can. No question about it. So the reason I'm on board is that we're we're taking a Northern Lights cruise. We're, we've, we've left Liverpool and we're heading up to Northern Norway. So we're sailing along the coastline of Norway, calling Mulder, Tromsø, Alta, Narvik, Buda and Trondheim, if, if that might not be the right order, but I think that's everywhere we're going. Um, you obviously sail all around the world with Fred Olsen. Um, I guess you've sailed in Norway before. So I'm curious to know, is there anything about the geography here, the, the, the way the ports are, the, the mountainous coastline that makes uh, cruising through Norway more challenging than other places? First of all, I would like to say that Norwegian cruises are, if I'm not wrong, the most popular cruises for us in Fred Olsen. So the, our passengers, our guests are mainly British, the big majority. So they are very much, um, they like the, the Norwegian coast. It's a beautiful coast. Even in the winter, like now, still, uh, still is very beautiful. And of course, we have to, to, to search for the Northern Lights. Summer, summertime, it's, it's special as well. Of course, the challenges are more in the winter when you have to deal with the weather. Now, touch wood, we are quite uh, lucky with the weather. Uh, but uh, of, of course, navigating between the fjords, it's, it's a different level of uh, manning the bridge and uh, observing with pilot on board. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't say that is more difficult than other areas. It's quite wide. And of course, we are restricted in which areas to go. Uh, no, not many challenges. I would say weather-wise, I would say the biggest challenge, especially now in the winter. That's mm -hmm. the main. Other than that, no, it's, it's looking good. How do you make that decision to, to miss a port or change direction? Is there a certain threshold of, of wave height or wind speed that makes that decision for you? Or is, it, is there more of an art to it than that to decide? It's practically the limitations the ship can take. Yeah, it, it, if it's big waves and very strong winds, you, you see it's unsafe to call a port and the ship is drifting a lot or uh, it's uh, pitching and rolling too much and it's becoming unsafe, then you have to say no. And it's based on the weather forecast. We have very good programs these days, which is giving you a quite accurate forecast. And then, then you have to decide, uh, of course, if, uh, if it's safe to go through or not. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's mainly the, 
the baseline for decision. On this cruise, we have uh, a couple overnight stops. We're in Ulta for almost two days, I think. Uh, does a captain of a ship get the opportunity to go into the port and, and relax a little, or do you have duties on board while we're while we're uh, docked? Yeah, of course, uh, yeah, I have duties on board, uh, even if we are in port or at sea. But uh, I can also, no problem, going out for a couple of hours and relaxing or uh, enjoying some, uh, not a tour, but visiting some places. Of course, closer to the ship, not too far, <laughs> in case you need to come back quickly. But uh, quite, I, I don't go that much, to be honest. It's places which I've seen through my career, so mm. here and there, so to speak. But you don't get distracted by the Norwegian landscape when you're sailing by, right? No, you have to be focused on the navigation, yeah. <laughs> you can't afford to, you have to be focused on navigation, but of course you can observe the beauty of the Norwegian fjords. Yeah. It must be pretty special. Um, I, I've been on the bridge before uh, in the north of Norway at night, and of course it's completely dark up here. Uh, it's it's very eerie place to be, I think, for for someone who doesn't spend a lot of time here. Um, it must be pretty special to see the northern lights from the bridge when when they come out. That, that, that's correct. It, it's some. It's a spectacular uh, show, so to speak. So uh, yeah, we're gonna try also this cruise to 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 get as much as we can. We're going to make announcements to our guests when, of course, if it's not during the late night or shows or uh, other things. And uh, yeah, we'll try to, to take the most uh, advantage as we can of the, of, the, of the places. And I hope the weather also will be on our side. Mm -hmm. And then everything is. The temperature I've seen is not too low this time. So it, the, the conditions are pretty good for, for seeing some northern lights. Yeah. yeah. So do you have any specific plans on this cruise uh, whilst we're in Tromsø or Alta? Is there anything you really want to see? Uh, you mean from my point of view? Uh, I, I've been many times, many times, and uh, it's beautiful when it's in the winter. So uh, no, nothing specific. Maybe going, because we stay three days in Alta, maybe going around a little bit. And Tromsø as well is a beautiful city. Yes. yes. But uh, I, I've been to, to, to these uh, this places many times, so I, I know exactly what uh, what they look like mm. and beautiful places whilst i have you captain i would also really like to hear your thoughts on the future of cruising um the industry is, has never really been stable there's been ups and downs over the decades but the last few years in particular have been crazy with you know, we've got brand new sh ships seem to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger or smaller and smaller and more luxurious mm. um we've had the pandemic of course which shut down the entire industry for between a year and two and a half years, depending on where in the world you are, um, are we through that now? Has as the what can the industry do to to adapt? And uh, what, what where do you think um, the future of cruising lies? Does it need to adapt? Does it need to change? I think the the industry is going in a good direction. Of course, considering the last years where we had this pandemic, which everything stopped, it, it was a, it was a shock for everybody. And after that. We had this uh, situation in Ukraine where, where the war started and it stopped or, or let's say put a break on, on uh, uh, coming up again the, the industry. But I think as soon as this will be over, I think we're going to have a boom and it's going to be same as before, even better. Because what I noticed, our guests, people in general, realize that life is short, so to speak. So what we get from this life is what we enjoy cruising or whatever hobbies we have. You never know when what things are coming. So it's better to, to take the most of, out of it and to enjoy it. And I think now the mentality changed quite a lot and a lot of people will come cruising. That's my, my belief. When the ship returns to Liverpool, what's the next cruise for you? Next cruise, we go south to Canary Islands, another beautiful area and very popular as well, very popular. So I'm looking forward to that with a little bit better weather than uh, <laughs> the, the warmer climate, so to speak. And the cruise before this, I know you weren't on board, but that also went to the Canary Islands, I think, or at least at least down to the, the south of yeah. uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. Does that happen a lot, kind of rotating between um, the north and the south like that? It must be, it must be diff different for the crew to be, you know, minus 10, minus 15 one week and then two weeks later be, be at 20 plus. Yeah. Correct, you're right. It, it's a big difference, but of course we we are used to that. We get adapted and uh, it's a lot of preparation also on the ship's side going to colder temperature so uh, we we know what uh, we have to do so we are used to that and uh, yeah we can change whatever and after that we're going to have a world cruise uh, soon next month which is a long cruise 80 days around the world yeah but beautiful beautiful cruise and uh, yeah it's a lot of uh, nice itineraries and variety
Well, Captain, I know you must be a very busy man, but uh, I've just got a couple of very quick final questions to ask you to finish up the interview. What's the best thing about life as a cruise ship captain? Uh, for me, it's interaction with our guests and also with our crew, of course. Uh, I mentioned that earlier, that it's fascinating to work with so many nationalities. And our guests, I have to say that our British guests are fantastic. I, I like it a lot to interact with them. What's the typical conversation? Do, do they complain about things in their cabin or do they ask you questions about the bridge? How, how does it work? No, not that much. They're not complaining. I have to say they're not yeah. complaining. People are very understandable because they see that there is a reason behind everything. And we don't, uh, I mean, we do whatever we can to, to offer the best we can. But of course, sometimes there are issues which you have to deal with. But in general, nothing at all. They're very, in the conversation, of course, it's mainly about cruising. Yeah, I, I must, I'm asked like, like yourself, uh, which areas are, I like to cruise, which are the best or which time of the year. I have guests which are coming, asking me when I'm on board. So we come cruise together. And oh. yeah, yeah, <laughs> through the years, I had many, many friends, which we keep in touch. And uh, yeah, very, it, it's really very, very interesting and very nice. That's fantastic. So if that's the best thing, what do you find most challenging about this job? Uh, most challenging, I would say, what can I say? It's Probably when we have bad weather, then is then is to 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 try to keep everything safe and in in a good working condition. I would say that, but this is not not happening too often. And uh, other than that, no, that that's the most the weather weather wise, you know, because that's something you can't control really. And of course, when you when you plan a cruise, maybe even two years in advance, you would never know how the so then you have to deal on spot. Let's say with so that I would say. Now, the final question I always ask guests on the Life in Norway show is where their favorite place in Norway is. Now, I know you don't live in Norway. You don't come to Norway very often. But if you have a favorite place in Norway, it would be great to, to hear about that. Uh, otherwise, your favorite place to cruise in the world. I like Oslo a lot because I, I work for the same company in Oslo for a couple of years in the office as a safety superintendent. So I live there most of the time. So I like very much Oslo. It's it's a nice city to 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 visit and to, to live. To, yeah, I like Oslo. And aside from Norway? Aside from Norway, I would say uh, Mediterranean. I like um, Italy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, UK. UK, when, for example, when we started uh, the cruising after the pandemic, we've been only through UK. To the, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got to see a lot of, uh, of UK places, only cruising at sea, not even going ports. Like we are just here. We just passed uh, Dutchman Cape, uh, Fingal's Cave, beautiful places to see. So fantastic. Wonderful. Captain Stoika, thank you so much for taking time out of your really busy day to talk to us today. Much appreciated. My, my pleasure. Thank you very much. 